Temporary crowns can be such a pain in the ass to make sometimes. Here are 10 tips to making that process so much more predictable. Tip number one, check out my short about quick matrices and stents. Tip number two, fill from the bottom to eliminate voids. Imagine a temp crown without voids to fill. It's a dream vacation. Stick around until the end of the video for one of the most important tips to prevent post-operative sensitivity. Tip number three, mark your finish lines and contacts with a pencil to make your life easier by not over-removing important things. Adding margins and contacts can easily gray your hair. Tip number five, if you have electric hand pieces, slow a flying diamond down to about 60,000 RPM. I mean, you can also use lab burrs designed for straight hand pieces as well to adjust contours. Tip number six, when trying in the crown, look for proper contacts, contours, and margins. Keeping the proper contours and contacts will make final crown delivery so much easier and predictable. Tip number seven, also when trying in the crown, look at the incisors to see if they are contacting light before and ask the patient if they can feel on the non-anesthetized side, I mean if they can feel their teeth contacting. This can speed up occlusal adjustment of your temp crown. Tip number eight, articulating paper is standard to check the bite. We all know that. But as well, shim stock is really helpful to figure out if the crown is exactly an occlusion or high or non-contacting. Like Dr. Yard used to tell us as residents, articulating paper will tell you where the contacts are and shim stock will tell you exactly how strong the contact is. Tip number nine, repairing voids or margins. Make sure you clean your temp crown before you add to it. I can't tell you how many times I've had articulating paper, blue or red, stained into a void or margin after I repair the crown. Check the thickness of your temp crown as it can indicate if you have prepared sufficiently. Tip number 10, polishing your restoration. There are so many different ways to polish temp crowns. All I want to say is take the time to polish them as your patient will appreciate it. Tip number 11, cementing. There are lots of different cements on the market. If you're not familiar with immediate dent and sealing, it might be something you want to think about for vital teeth. I've had this on my own cracked teeth and it makes a huge difference in post-operative sensitivity. Tip number 13, Take the time to clean around the crown once you've cemented it. In my experience, the cement may actually cause post-operative problems, and if you took an impression during that appointment, you might actually find retraction cord that you forgot about. Yes, I'm being honest here. So thank you so much for being here. I hope that was very helpful. We'll talk to you soon. Do you know this feeling? You know, you cut your crown, you place your temporary crown, and you're super proud of it. But then the patient calls in a few days and is experiencing pain and pulpitis and you want to help them. But you're super nervous about starting that endo, but you really want to challenge yourself and get better. But you're still nervous? Well, I've been there, lots. Are you scared about asking questions online about how to tackle a case? Oh, trust me, I've been there as well. I know exactly how you feel and I've created a course to learn a predictable way to confidently get down teeth and as well a safe place to ask all your endo related questions. Trust me, there is no judgment here, only help. This course will give you the tips I've been taught and learned the hard way over two decades of practice because I know your struggle. I've been there over and over. Check us out at allthingsendo.ca. You won't be disappointed.